All right. Hello, students. I'm Mr. Papino. Welcome, my, welcome to my lecture. Oh, let me share my screen real quick. Do, do, do. All right, here we go. We're going to start. Here's the, this is, the lecture is called impact of, The Impact of History, The Conquest of Gaul and the Indian American War. Okay, before we get started, I'm going to stop sharing for a second. I'm going to send a link to the chat. If you guys want to press that, this is like a self-assessment so we can see where we're at. Go ahead and press it. It's going to ask you to log in. Press log in as a student. You won't have to create an account. Just I'll copy and paste the room number in there for you. All right, that's the room name. Go and get in there. There should be a quiz on there. I don't think I'm pretty new to this service. So if it doesn't work, it doesn't work and that's okay. All right, there's only a few questions, so it shouldn't take too long. All right, perfect. Looks like you guys are all pretty much done. Except with number of question. Yeah, there we go. All right, perfect. I'll finish up the quiz and we can really get into it. Perfect. There we go. Thank you. Let me share my screen again. Let's do the presentation. All right, there's the self assessment. All right, the theme of this lecture is repeating histories and the importance of studying history. Obviously, it's important. Understanding the past helps us understand the future and the present we live in today. It's pretty basic. That's the way it is. And we're going to focus on Roman conquest and colonial colonialization and how what Rome did mirrors a lot of what is happening today and what's been going on for the last few centuries. Especially, and it's especially important, I think, to study Rome. That's she's kind of he's, Rome is kind of the mother civilization to our civilizations, and we have a lot of the same habits. All right, today we're going to be talking about the Celts. Who were they? They were the largest group of native European people inhabiting the continent of Europe, at least back to 800 BC, even before that. They settled the entire continent and they're broken down into several tribes, which is, tribes is not the word I want to use, but I really don't know what else I would say, nations perhaps. Some examples are the Helvetii, the Belgae, they have those names ending in double I, and their culture is based a lot around nature and the environment. Something important, an important part of the culture is animism, which is the idea that animals and creatures of the land have special symbolic and spiritual importance. And something else important to them is warfare, combat. It's very important. There's a lot of ceremonies, coming of age activities that are based around combat, for example, they would dot, bleach their hair completely white with a combination of alcohol and urine as a way to symbolize they are grown into their full adulthood and ready to fight in the battlefield. And the fact that their warfare is so important in their culture is kind of why they're very infamous, especially to Rome. They were extremely vicious in combat and struck fear into the hearts of a lot of outsiders. And they thrived amongst themselves until Rome really entered the picture. Here we've got a couple images. Here's Gaul, the main region, region that we talk about when we're talking about the conquest of Gaul. 
broken down into several regions. Belgica, where the Belgae live, Celtica, there's, you can see the Helvetii, the Pictone, all these different tribes. And right here on the top is a statue called the Dying Celt. And this is a Roman sculpture around the time of the conquest of Gaul. You can see he's naked, which is both just Roman sculptural tradition, you sculpt people in the nude, but also an interesting fact about the Celts is they fought in combat, they fought completely nude, both to maximize their movement potential and to intimidate whoever they were fighting. I think that's an interesting little fact. All right, here we go. The conquest of Gaul went from 58 to 50 BC, mainly in the region of Gaul, a little bit in Southern Britain, led by Julius Caesar. The reason Julius Caesar wanted to lead a, con lead a conquest into this region was to take the land, land is very valuable, to give him some political clout back in the Senate. It was, this was really his stepping stone, his claim to fame that helped him gain a lot of power. And one that people don't talk about a lot is the potential for slave labor. There's a lot of money to be, set, to be made by kidnapping and selling Celtic people as slaves. To counter Rome, the Roman armies coming in, um, a leader of the Averni tribe, Vercingetorix, united the Gallic people, all the Celts there, and formed a, a, large, a large army to counter Rome's influence. It was ultimately pointless because Caesar did defeat Vercingetorix. It looks like Sammy just joined. Hey, Sammy. To defeat, we're talking about the Celts right now and the conquest of Gaul. And Caesar did end up defeating Vercingetorix's army in a huge battle, the, the Battle of Alessi, I believe, the Battle of Alessi, I think. And it's not until four years later that Vercingetorix is publicly executed at a parade for a victory in Rome, back in Rome, he's beheaded. And in the conquest, as many as one in five Celts were slaughtered, and more than a million people, and Another several million were kidnapped and sold into slavery as Rome moved in and occupied the land for its, own, <clears throat> for its own purposes. And this is really what kicked off the erasure of Celtic culture. And now we have almost no remnants. There's some communities in Ireland, they still speak a Celtic language, Gaelic. And there are several, there's a few vocab words in French that still have Celtic origin. All right, next one. Who are the, the indigenous North Americans? It's this one. This was a hard slide for me to make. Saying Native Americans is it's such a diverse word. It means people in South America, North America, Central America. In this situation, we're mostly talking about pe the people who occupied, which is now the ca Canada, the United States, and Northern Mexico. But even that is too, it's too diverse to say what, this is one group of people. You can break the cultures down more by region. The plain, there's plains, Native Americans who have cultural similarities. The forested areas in the Northeast, they have, they have similar cultures. But one thing that is similar across the board pretty much is a focus on com environment and community. And there we see again, the word animism, similar to Celtic culture, animals being important. And again, there's the foreign attempt to erase the culture and remove the people for their own, for the more dominant culture's own, own gain. There's some more images. The, there's the cultural regions of the United States breaking down, broken down. There's the Southeast, the Northeast forested area, the plains, the desert down in the Southwest, North Mexico. And then here above, we see a famous painting by an American painter depicting Manifest Destiny, which is huge in the movement westward by American people, it really drove the American Indian War to be what it was. Speaking of, here's the American Indian Wars. They lasted from the mid 17th century and a little bit before that to the early 20th century. It, was, it wasn't a war in the traditional sense. It was a combination of armed clashes and government legislation trying to erase and relocate native groups. 
It began really with English settlers, Jamestown. There was une uneasy relations between natives and Jamestown settlers, and it escalated from there over the centuries. Um, the native, unlike in Gaul, the native people are unable to really unite to form one armed front. There are several reasons. There, se <clears throat> there are several reasons. One, population. There were a, a lot fewer na Native Americans to fight, mostly because of disease brought over from Europe that ripped through the population and reduced it drastically. And the range, the size of the United States. Gaul is about the size of Texas. And have it have it, they're all there's about the same amount of people but all jammed into one area they were able to unite their, their cultures were far more similar they could communicate this is entirely different for native people they couldn't yeah they couldn't unite and form one group it ended in 1924 something called the posey war a group of U, a, a utah a utah militia forced native peoples out of their area in a it wasn't a big conflict only about 30 native people were involved, but that was really the last, the last thing that marks the end of the native, native American, American wars. And this of course radically reduced the number of people and the cultural impact of the natives. All right, here we go. I'm gonna not stop sharing that. Never mind. Let's compare and contrast. What, I, what are some similarities that you guys might've seen or not seen? If you remember, if you guys want to share, you don't have to. I'm not going to make you. One quality that the con that the Gaul and Celtic um, side of things had was the Celtics, who were like the oppressed group, they were able to form like a united group to defend mm -hmm. against the Roman Empire, while um, on the American Indian side of things, um, the populations were more like sparsely like located and mm. they weren't able to really form that united group to defend themselves. Yeah, that's very true. Good work. Thank you, Alec. Um, I'd say these events are, are pretty similar in it's, yeah, it's a colonial power versus a, again, I don't like the word tribe, tribal people, I don't really care for, but it, I guess it works in this situation. It's a tribal, less powerful group of people versus a dominant funded army that has the power to, has power to, has muscles that they can flex on the people. Um, yeah, if you guys, um, I think that if you guys don't have anything else to add, I guess that concludes, that, yeah. One thing, um, do the result of um, various groups of Native Americans instead of a more gathered Celtic culture, um, the American Indian Wars were more spread out over a longer period of time mm -hmm. um, rather than one big push for Celts. You are very, that's, that's right. That's, that is correct. I think, and that might be part of, I think partly that is why we still, we still see pretty significant, even though the numbers are a lot smaller, we still see pretty active and significant native groups who still have their culture, both because I think, yes, Alec. Oh, I just have a question after that. Your explanation. Okay. Okay. They're still, there's been attempts made with, a, there's a shift in the general American viewpoint of not, not supporting the events of the American Indian Wars. So we still see, thank, thankfully, we still see active Native American groups. Yes, Alec. Um, I remember learning about uh, the Roman conquest and stuff in world history. And I know my teachers said, it was kind of like a, if you can't beat them, join them situation. Mm -hmm. And so I was curious if the Celtic groups who survived, did they like conform to Roman culture and conform to all that empire, empire stuff? Yeah, there was a lot of, there's as, as similar as Celtic groups were to each other, there was a lot of divisiveness. 
So Gaul, that region, the Celts who lived there, they formed a united front. But there were other tribes more to the east in Eastern Europe and northern and closer to the north in the area that is now Germany. They were allied with Rome and a, kind of allowed Roman influence into their area. So there's, I guess, oh, I heard someone say this, some a historian say it. There's the idea of what people are willing to die for, and not only die for, willing to lose their culture, lose their fa let let their family, their children, and their wives die for, and that's just a decision that the not the Celts who didn't live in Gaul made. They they knew that if they didn't resist Roman influence, they would be obliterated. Whereas in Gaul, Versing Vercingetorix would rather fight for his freedom and his ability to practice like live his own culture outside of Roman influence. And he pushed the other Gauls to do the same. All right, if that's it, I'm gonna stop sharing my screen. Thank you for all for attending my, my lecture. Hey, there's Sammy. Hey, Sammy. All right, everyone have a wonderful day.